We want to share tonight, I do want to share with you tonight that are listening. Maybe you couldn't get out and go to church tonight. I know we do a lot of music during the share time. Many, many songs. Some of them sung over several times. And those, those are the really good ones, like Victory in Jesus, I'll Fly Away. We appreciate the musicians up here with us. A little bit of fiddle and a 12-string guitar and, and bass drums and keyboard and all that good stuff. We, we appreciate that. Do you call yourself New Harmonies? Mm -hmm. Well, New Harmony back. well it, it, it was really wonderful for New Harmonies and Classic Harmonies to collide to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> two, two Harmonies. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I always said, you know, when you get two Harmonies together, you know what you got? You got a mess. <laughs> And all y'all remember my brother Gigi, he, he loved WDFB. He listened to WDFB riding around the truck at home, wherever it might be. A lot of his favorite groups, he'd get a CD of them and, and would play them, I think, until they wore out. And when they wore out, he'd whistle. He'd ride around Junction City whistling. A lot of the kids thought it was the ice cream truck coming. They'd run out with their money and found it was him. They didn't come back in the house. I do miss my brother just like you miss your loved ones that have gone on to be with the Lord. And but one day we're gonna have a homecoming. We're gonna come back together and we'll be reunited forever and ever and ever. You know, I believe if God had a word for us as a church today, and I'm not talking about our nation, I'm talking about our church today. The word would come from Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Many times we preach this as preachers in revival, the first message and all these things. But seriously, what Solomon had done, he had built the temple and he was dedicating the temple. And this is what God did under conditions. He said, if you do this, then I will do this in, in return. And, and you know, God deals with us and He works with us. And, and, and as a church, listen, the answer is not at the White House, it's not at the courthouse. It's not at the Capitol House in Frankfurt. The answer is at the church house. Amen. We've got the real answer. And it's all right here. God's already texted it all to us. We don't need an iPhone or an iPad or a, or a Blackberry or, or anything like that. We don't need a projection screen. We've got it all right here. God has given us the answer, folks. Amen. For all of us here tonight, meeting together, for this occasion, none of us are here by mistake. If you're listening to the radio tonight, you're not listening by mistake, but God is dealing with His church today. And sometimes when God deals with us, He has to get rough with us sometimes. Not that He doesn't love us, but He loves us enough that He doesn't want calamity to come upon us. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ used to be the central area where everyone went to find out what was going on in church so they could schedule their events. Amen. It is no longer that way. We play soccer, football, baseball, basketball. We have family reunions. We have all kinds of other activities on the Lord's Day. Amen. Preachers mow their yards on Sunday now, wash their cars, and play their golf and do their fishing. And we wonder why our churches are in the shape that they are in. There is a time now as, as churches today that we seriously need to seek God. We need to seriously seek God. And in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and I love the whole, the whole verse. I love the whole verse of, a uh, uh, whole chapter rather, uh, 7. But, but Solomon, he, he had given quite a bit unto the Lord. And you read about 22,000 cattle, uh, 120,000 sheep. This is what he gave as a sacrifice. There was so much to sacrifice that the, that the, that the bowls of offering couldn't hold them. And so he had to do some temporary uh, methods to, to give unto the Lord. And, and God told, told uh, uh, Solomon, He said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this temple as a place for making sacrifices. You see, we've turned the church house, the place, the temple where we worship, we turned it into anything goes. It doesn't really matter. But we, as God's people, we need to realize that a communion table has a spiritual significance in it, and it's not made for your hind end or mine to sit on or to stand on or to play on, but rather it's a, it's a place that's set aside to recognize and remember what the Lord Jesus has done for us. The bread represents the body and the wine represents His blood that was shed for us so that we could have remission of sin. God said, 
Solomon, I, I, I have looked at what you've said. I've listened to what you've said. And now, he said, I'm, I, at times he said, I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls or command grasshoppers to eat up everything you planted in your crops or, or send plagues among you. Then he said in verse 14, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will will forgive their sins and restore their land. That is, He will heal our land. He says, My eyes will be open and My ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. Amen. For I have chosen this temple and set it apart to be holy, a place where My name will be honored forever. I will always watch over it, for it is dear to My heart. You see, God made a promise to Solomon. He made a promise not only to Solomon, but He made a promise to the Hebrews. He said, if you will do this, then I will hear every prayer that you pray. And I will deal, and I will move, and I will speak, and I will answer those prayers. You remember the prayer of Hezekiah when he had the boil. And the boil, as Isaiah came to him, the Lord, Lord told Isaiah to, to tell Hezekiah, you're going to die. Now what would you do if a prophet of God came to you and said, the Lord has told me you're going to die. Hezekiah had kind of strayed out here in right and left field and had left the stadium. He was no longer in the game, but he was in it for himself. He was all about himself. And, and, and Hezekiah stopped praying. He stopped being in the Word of God. He stopped worshiping God. You know, it doesn't take much for someone to miss church anymore. Amen. A lot of it can just be flat out laziness. In the in the King James, it call it calls it slothfulness, laziness, laziness. God doesn't God doesn't like laziness. He he disdains that. It, it's an admonition unto God for His people to be lazy. Uh, this sister over here is gonna get up early in the morning. She's still here. You're going to get up real early in the morning. I would throw a bucket of water on him in the morning. I love you and I'm off to work. I want you to know I'm happy. About four or five hours, he'll dry out and he'll go back to sleep. All right, if he can. But you know, we do what we want to do, don't we? We live the way we want to live. It doesn't really matter about God anymore. And Hezekiah had got to the point, he said, I don't need God. I'm king. I'm the, I'm the high up in this, in this uh, 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 community that God has given me and I'm high up and I don't really need God anymore because I know how to do it all. You see, Hezekiah forgot what it was like to trust God. Sometimes we get that way, don't we, church? We don't trust God. We meet our budgets. We pay our bills. We pay our preacher. We pay the utilities. We get the insurance paid. We have a good offering on Sunday. And, and you know, we think everything's okay. But just because we give of our money and we meet our bills, that doesn't mean everything's okay. Just because we show up on Sunday morning or Sunday evening or Wednesday night, that doesn't mean everything's okay. Just because we may get up and teach or we get up and preach, that doesn't mean everything's okay. Because God knows everything that's going on in us and around us. He knows why we do what we do and what we do it for. He knows our motives. And Hezekiah had changed his motives. But one thing about Hezekiah, he turned in his bed and he faced the wall. And if you read in, 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 in the Bible, you will read that, that Hezekiah did one thing. You know what it was? He prayed. He prayed. Because he didn't have long to live. And he knew he was going to have to stand before God. So he turned his back to everyone and he faced the wall because what he was doing was very serious. Now prayer became a vital part of Hezekiah's life because he had a major crisis. He was going to die. It doesn't matter what kind of house you and I live in or what street we're on. It doesn't matter what kind of clothes we wear. It doesn't matter how our complexion is. It doesn't matter how much money we, we might have or gold or silver and all these things. You see, when Hezekiah was told he was going to die, being king didn't mean anything anymore. Amen. But he was going to face God. Just like you and I, we will face God one day. Hezekiah... He prayed. He not only prayed, but he also he, he began to get into the Word. And, and, and God told Hezekiah, He said, I will turn the sundial back. And on King Ahaz, his sundial will go back ten notches. 
The sun will reverse. Time will reverse. This is how serious it was, folks, in the days of Hezekiah. And, and, and God gave him that sign. He told, he told said, uh, the prophet Isaiah said, go and get salve and put it on the bowl and Hezekiah will be healed. And they did as, as the Lord told them and Hezekiah was healed. And when Hezekiah was healed, he began to witness. He began to tell people about the Almighty God. You see, when God does a supernatural thing in you, you can't keep it quiet. If you, can't keep, if you keep it quiet, then it's not a God thing. It's something of the enemy. It's something that's false and fake. The Bible says we are to try the spirits. We are to try the Spirit because not every Spirit comes to us is of the Spirit of God. But when God does it, you know it's real. And it keeps on keeping on. It keeps lasting. And God begins to bless upon that. And fruits come forth. And, 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 and God does it. It's for real. And Hezekiah not only began to testify and witness uh, the, the Lord God and what He'd done. You see, church, that's what we got to get busy about. We stop witnessing. We become keepers of the aquarium. Yeah. We're not fishermen of the sea. We're not going out here and reaching lost people. WDFB gets preachers in here and they have programs that come in from, from other parts of, of the country, other, other preachers and teachers, and they teach the gospel every day. Sad to say, probably more people are saved at the Bull County Jail than they are in the churches in Bull That's County. And the reason is because men and women come in and they minister. They come from every denomination and they preach and share the gospel. Brother Randy comes in once or twice every month. And there's, there's the Gideons that come in every two weeks and they go through and they distribute the Scriptures to anyone that wants a copy of the Bible. We have, we have about 150 volunteers that come on a monthly basis to do ministry there at the jail. You see, when you, get, when you get on fire for God, you will be that witness. You will begin to tell others. You'll be wanting people to come to church where Jesus is really alive. Yeah. I told them this morning at New Harmony, I said, they, they, a lot of people don't want what we got. So they got enough problems already. They come in and look and they see you and they see me. And, and, and the way we look, whatever they got, I don't want it. <laughs> John Wesley, he wanted what the Mormons had. They were, they were a, a really highly spiritual people. They got excited about this, this relationship with Jesus. And, they, and they, they impressed Him so much that He came to know Christ. And one of the greatest preach, preacher reformers of, our, uh, of, of years behind us was John Wesley. Man, he, he preached the Word with enthusiasm. He was excited about being saved. He was excited about being a Christian. And you see, Hezekiah said, Now I will sing songs and worship God. Imagine that. Those that have died, they can't do it. They're in the grave. Imagine that. I'm the only one now that can do it on this side. But when I get to the other side, what I've done is over. Church age is coming to an end. The trumpet is going to sound. Jesus is going to come in the clouds in the eastern sky and He's going to split them wide open as the lightning comes from the east to the west and He's going to gather His church in. The archangel is going to shout and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Folks, get ready. Church age is coming to a close. It's time for us to turn and face the wall and begin to pray and seek God and to be that witness and to step out by faith believing what God says He will do, He will do. If my people will humble themselves and turn from their sins and, and come to me, He said, then I will heal their, hear their prayers and He said, I will heal their land. He said, I will bring about what you really need here in the United States and around the world. And He said, this temple Solomon, He said, I have chosen this temple and set it apart to be holy, a place where my name will be honored forever. Know you not that your body, my body, is a temple of the Holy Spirit. That is where God dwells and lives in present now. Watch what programs you watch on TV. He may get sick and get up and leave. Watch where you go. Watch what you look at. Watch what you think. Be careful to what you do. He may just get so sick of it. He said, I can't stand this. I'm not going to tolerate it. You see, what God did for Hezekiah, He gave him 15 more years. 15 more years to live. To say, here's what God has done. And if you'll follow Him, you'll have the same thing. He'll deliver you. He'll set you free. He will heal you. He will bring about what only He can do. 
Does America really need God? We've got our garage door openers. We've got our satellite TVs. We have internet. we got Bluetooth. we got iPhones and iPads. we got all this stuff. we got all these things of convenience and luxury. We have heating and we have air. And we have all the comforts of the world. Do we really need God as America? Most people don't think so. Most people don't think so. Most people believe that God is just something that's been made up. Or they say, well, I believe God the way I want to believe. The Bible says we've all sinned and we've come short of the glory of God. And that is every one of us are sinners compared to Jesus Christ. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says with the heart, with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see, God is not a liar. John said that whosoever should receive Him, that is Jesus Christ, God will give eternal life. Whoever receives Christ, that if you believe what Jesus did on the cross was sufficient enough for your sins, and that He paid the price there on the cross, and that there's no other way to come by the Father. You see, God did what we couldn't do. We can't go to Him in our own righteousness. He came to us in His holy righteousness. And He crossed that, that gap and He put in a bridge for us to come across to where He is. And that, that's a cross at Calvary. What will you do with Jesus today? He stands at your door and He knocks. He said in Revelation, the, the Spirit of God was, was talking to the church of Laodicea, but we can say that personally tonight for individuals. Behold, Jesus said, I stand at the door and I knock. And if any man open the door, I will come in and fellowship with him and he will fellowship with me. You see, Christ stands at your life's door. Some say heart. For a child, that's hard to understand. You know, uh, somebody like Jesus come into this physical beating heart and that's not what it means. What it means, He wants to come into your life. And He wants to take all of your life and use it for His glory and His honor and for the building of His kingdom. My, my, my. What would happen if all of us left here tonight and we go back to our churches, change people. We go back and, and we're not the same anymore. Not because I preach tonight or, or not because it's anything that anyone else has done, but because the Spirit of God came down and visited us tonight and He said, I want to come in. I want to get back in your church house. I still want to be there in your pulpit, preachers. He said, I still want to be there when you're singing. I want you to, when you, when you begin to do things, you're doing it unto me and not unto yourself. You're doing it for my glory and my honor. And it's not about you, but it's all about me. It's all about Him. It's all about the Father receiving the glory. And Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men and women unto me. The church can lift the sign up. we got a pretty sign out front. But it doesn't bring people in. We don't put any specials up, you know, anything. Uh, buy one, get one free. But we got a beautiful sign out front so people will know where we are. That doesn't do it. we got a beautiful building. Uh, uh, the women that did the decorating interior stuff, it, it's really pretty, it's beautiful. And, and they did a fantastic job, just like the church where you go. But it doesn't bring people in. They don't come in and say, ooh and ah, I said, boy, I'm so glad I came here, I don't want to leave. You see, if we lift Jesus up, we hold up the true light. We hold up the real drawing power. We lift, lift Him up, people will see Him and they will come to know truth and they will be set free and they will no longer be captive to sin. They will no longer be under the influence of the enemy. And He's got many right now, but Jesus is ready to break that barrier down and, and, and break those shackles, those chains, and set free the captive tonight. He's ready to do that. You may be listening tonight on radio radio or internet and, and, and your life is just not where it should be right now. There's one way that you can begin that journey to make it right and that's to turn it all over to Jesus Christ tonight. And you can do it right there where you are. You can make that step. You can speak to God tonight and cry out to Him repenting of your sins and asking Him to forgive you and invite Him into your life tonight and He will hear that cry if it's an earnest sincere cry unto Him. He will hear it no matter where you are. You say, well, I thought I had to go to church to be saved. You don't go to the funeral home to die. Amen. You don't go to the hospital to get sick. You come to Him. 
You call out to Him. He's right there, right now. Wherever you might be. You may be in St. Martin. You may be in St. Benton. You may be in Samoa, Saudi Arabia. You may be in Ecuador or Egypt or Afghanistan. You may be in Haiti. You may be in the United Kingdom. You may be right here in the United States, right here in Kentucky. You may be right here in Ball County. Do wherever you are and you hear this. Listen, God is speaking tonight. He's calling out to you. He's saying that whosoever will, let them come tonight. Let them come. And God has opened up the doors of heaven. And He wants to invite you to come and be a part of His everlasting plan. And it begins right here on earth. Father, tonight I pray for every person that's in this building. Lord, I'll lift them up to you, whoever they might be, whatever they're involved with right now. But God, I pray You would search every one of our hearts tonight. Lord, that You would just speak to us. I pray for every person tonight that's listening by radio or by internet. Father, I pray that You would just minister to them. Lord, that Your Holy Spirit will convince them of the truth tonight and He will convict them of sin. Lord, that surrender will take place tonight. Lord, we can't win this war down here till we surrender. And Lord, tonight, let there be a time of surrendering. And Lord, all that You do, we praise You and thank You most of all for Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. For it's in His name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.